Well, like uh, Rodas wanted us to send his apologies, but uh, he moved home in real life yesterday, so he won't be here tonight. Okay, well, thanks for letting us know. I guess we can go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see, it's been a few weeks since our last meeting. Um, we have had at least one new viewer release, which is the Performance Floater Auto FPS, um, and a bunch of bunch of work around getting that merged in to everything else. Uh, I think Dave's been delving into the performance ramifications and and uh, doing some tweaks on that uh, in the materials branch. Um, and other viewers going on, we have, uh, let's see, emojis are waiting on some back-end work we need, um, but are otherwise coming along pretty well, I think. Uh, thumbnail support viewer is also in pretty good shape, um, should be coming out in the not-too-distant future. And uh, let's see, materials... Uh, BLTF Materials is in RC now, and we're actually working on the key bugs there. Uh, Dave, do you want to give a blurb on where Materials is these days? Uh, sure, though I've been heads down on all perfstat stuff. Um, so where's that? It's uh, skies are still problematic. Uh, I think that's the the last giant broken window uh, and then there's just a long list of more minor uh maintenance issues um but that is still coming along um thanks to cosmic for fixing one of the more glaring uh issues which was uh huds disappearing when uh transparent water is unchecked um <laughs> oops so that's pretty much where it's at. Uh, the visual quality is about probably where it's going to be. Um, and it's just trying to uh, knock out places where uh, we've uh, broken uh, legacy content or um, uh, find like combinations of settings that are behaving in unexpected ways. Plus performance as always all right sounds good uh let's see other updates uh we have a few changes in the works for minimum specs and such like that uh probably worth mentioning in this uh venue uh, one is that we're planning to update the minimum system spec for uh, Mac OS. Um, this is related to trying to build with recent versions of Xcode. Um, we're, vision, we're building with Xcode 14.3, which requires, uh, which requires you to be running on a Mac OS version, at least 10.13. Um, so, uh, and it turns out a very small percentage of folks are using older Mac OS builds at this point, or Mac OS versions. So uh, we'll be um, we'll be kind of officially saying that that's the minimum system requirement for Mac from here on out. Uh, I'm not sure what everybody else is is doing with that. Do you uh, do you have different values for your Mac Mac minimums? Beck, do you say anything about about how old a uh, Mac version people should be able to run the viewer on? It's probably fair to not support anything that's officially end of life, I guess. <laughs> That would save us a lot of verbiage in our minimum system requirements if we just said that. Uh, let's see, another change we've been talking about is getting rid of the 
32-bit Windows builds. Um, doesn't seem to be a ton of people who really need them at this point. Um, you know, 64-bit OSs are pretty ubiquitous, and squirrely graphics cards that can't handle 64-bit drivers are also pretty scarce on the ground at this point. Um, I'm not sure how many other folks are actually maintaining 32-bit. Is that uh, is it still in Firestorm? Yeah. Yeah, we still have a handful of people using it, but it's uh it's a pretty small number these days. A fair amount of additional fiddling to keep that all working, especially now that we're in the process of rebuilding all the libraries. Yeah, apparently the only real reason to run 32-bit is because of some buggy Intel graphics drivers. So the people running 32-bit are actually on a 64-bit OS. But the 32-bit Intel drivers on that version of Windows work <laughs> and the 64-bit ones don't. Yeah, that's pretty weird. Uh, let's see, speaking of library updates, uh, we are pretty far along now on a project to move viewer builds to GitHub Actions. So this involves, uh, among other things, rebuilding and in a lot of cases updating our third-party libraries, um, getting those all working in GitHub, getting the viewer building in GitHub, um, and pretty close to getting all of that working with fresh Fresh and correct dependency updated builds of everything, um, but it's still going to be some additional work before we're completely off of our uh, our old code ticket based code ticket and uh, Team City based system. Um, so just FYI, in case anybody's looking for library updates or whatever, um, one one big piece of this is that we're updating CEF after, I don't know, a couple of years. It hasn't been updated for a while. So uh, if, you're, if you've are if you been waiting on new uh, or newer stuff at CEF, this will be your chance to get it. And let's see, I think that's it for uh, kind of officially scheduled announcements. Um, so we're open for uh, general discussions or questions or whatever. So if you see Windows 8 32-bit and your um, viewer stats, um, that's probably actually Windows 10 64-bit running a 32-bit process. Uh, so a question about the emoji viewer. Uh, I think I mentioned that earlier. The the main blocker right now is some uh, some back end work to get uh, some some stuff uh, coded correctly. I think I think the actual UI and everything is pretty close to done. So uh, it's more a matter of just getting some uh, some server team attention. Um, and so I don't have a hard date on when that's going out, but I'm hoping it won't be too much longer before we have a, a project viewer that we can let people loose on.
Yeah, Beck, our, our numbers are probably similar to that. The number of people who are using actual 32-bit OS is, is uh, extremely small. When the Windows version gets to the point where it's no longer supported and no longer receives security fixes, we basically can't work with it anymore. Um, so it goes on the you know completely unsupported list. And I think it may be the case that all of the 32-bit uh, Windows OSs are are in that category now. Online friends display issue. Um, can you tell me more about that one? There, there are a couple of simulator bugs in, in that. Yes, it's a, it's a server fix. Okay. There's, there's, there are two. Um, one having to do with friends who are online not showing up as online. And another where uh, when you make a new friend, all of the rest of your friends go offline. Um, correct. The, uh, cor uh, uh, correct, Beck. The, uh, the, UDP, the UDP frame changes that we made did not did not impact that. We hope they would, but they didn't. Uh, well, yes, actually, that would improve some other UDP stuff. Back. Um. I don't have any specifics for you, Worley. Related to friends? Ah, oh, okay. Um, maybe? I, uh, we don't have, since we don't have area search in our viewer, um, I don't know. I know that there's also an issue still in interest list, and uh, especially right after you've logged in. More than a magazine, Worley. Back, I'm guessing it would be too long a stretch to call it an improvement. Yeah, usually the number one culprit when stuff just stops showing up is uh, occlusion calling.
Oh, hey, hey, Beck, I am you about that. Uh, we've got somebody in QA working on getting it set up. Speaking of terrain, uh, Cosmic, did you want to talk about the um, terrain mini project? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, coming soon, if all goes well, um, we may soon see PBR terrain. I don't have a build just yet, but hope to provide a test build as soon as one is available. <laughs> Long-term fans of the materials project may remember that we were uh, originally talking about doing a terrain project and by popular demand wound up switching to materials instead, um, but uh, the hope is still that we can leverage that to do some of the things we were originally talking about for terrain. Yeah, in this case, um, it's kind of exploiting a weakness in the simulator. Um, because the simulator doesn't actually check that the asset IDs that you give it for um, the terrain textures are textures. So we can just give it material asset IDs and it happily gives them back. And then we can use those instead of the textures. Presumably this means that anybody who's running on a non-material supporting viewer is going to have a bad day or at least bad looking terrain. I mean, yeah, anything that you could, well, it wouldn't be like a planar mirror, but it would be, you could have chrome, sure. It can be, it, it, if it's a PBR material and it's shiny, then it will be shiny. Cyberpunk regions will be happy. No guarantees, but if all goes well, hopefully within a month. But uh, it's just me working on it, so we shall see. And this will be a alpha test build built on top of the PBR branch. And... and Cosmic could get pulled off if we have too many bugs that need attention in the materials viewer, so so don't file any bugs against the materials viewer. There's a uh, strong suspicion that everybody is seeing the same bugs and
thinking, oh, someone else must have reported this. It's so obvious. Yeah, I should be extremely clear that I'm kidding. We definitely want book reports. Uh, apologies, folks. I, I'm actually going to have to to step away to talk to some uh, folks who are doing some work on the house here. Um, Dave, any chance you could uh, take over for the rest of the meeting? Sure. All right. Thank you much. Sorry about that, folks. Um, I think we've covered most of the major news, but if there's any other questions, uh, we can talk more about it. Anyway, have a good weekend, all. I think the PBR cohort is a thousand now, but I'm not positive. Yes, one thousand. And yeah, the the skies issue. I, I'm not seeing an imminent fix for that. It it really is one of those where. Um, I'll spend a day on it and end up right back where I started. So trying to set it down for a little while and then come back to it and hopefully have one of those. Oh, duh. Moments. Yeah, um, I mean, we have 120 issues on the uh, to-do pile. Um, but most of them are fairly minor at this point. Uh, the only known showstopper for the next RC was the uh, check the box and uh, for transparent water and HUDs disappear. Um, the but with some changes to how Hello Perf Stats does its multi-threading, um, I accidentally introduced introduced a deadlock, so that's the new showstopper. <laughs> Fifty 
or was it a 1080? I can't remember. GTX 750, okay. Yeah, the only thing I think would make that run worse. Right, the only thing I think that is making those systems run worse is the 16-bit uh, 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 per component render targets and the uh, reflection probe search. Um, one of those things you can disable the other one, not quite yet. Uh, the VRAM, uh, at one gig, like the experience of having one gig of VRAM as far as texture thrashing is, it is actually much improved. Um, it's, it is constantly thrashing the textures. Um, but that's why the experience is better because it's constantly saying never anything else get out and like res the one that's in front of me. Uh, AMD is fine, um, NVIDIA is usually better, but only marginally. Um, So the even when there's no PBR content present, um, it's still uh, doing reflection probes uh, and applying those to legacy content. I can tell you from profiling that uh, NVIDIA has much better performance uh, on the CPU side um, when you're draw call bound. Even after AMD's recent driver updates, but AMD is rapidly catching up in that regard and they might be a little bit ahead on the GPU side. Hooray for competition, right? Yeah, AMD has been putting a lot of effort into their OpenGL drivers lately. It's mostly been Minecraft-centric, but... It's also helping us. Yeah, and we're really on the reflections checkbox getting removed. There is a, an advanced setting now, uh, reflection coverage. And if you set that to none, um, you might get a boost. Because uh, that'll just that'll remove the reflection probe search. It'll just use one environment map for the whole scene.
don't think Gaines is here, but Gaines has been making some strides on uh, better screen space reflections because the uh, first thing you do when you give people mirrors is give them every opportunity to not rely on mirrors. Because, yeah, uh, they're expansive. Yeah, the uh, the current version of SSR that's in the RC um, is definitely quick and dirty. Um, it's better than no SSR, but it's not good, and Gaines isn't happy with it and is working on a good replacement. SSR algorithm and the RC is kind of the uh, 2012, 2013 uh, flavor. And Gaines is working on one that's more like a 2017. Screen space reflections are one of those things where it's not a magic bullet. You still have to set up good reflection probes. <clears throat> There's unfortunately no getting around that until everybody has hardware that can just do real time ray tracing. Yeah, SSR without reflection probes looks really weird. Just odd scene fragments showing up in reflections and nothing else. Real-time ray tracing being like um, ubiquitous, uh, it's probably another 10, 10 years. Yeah. It usually takes 15 years between the time something gets introduced and the time that it's ubiquitous.
Yeah, Gaines has been showing off some work in progress pictures. Um, getting on getting softer screen space reflections that don't have all those st stair stepping in them. the wrong thing or is it oh that's low res one Yeah, yeah, but that's a part for the course when you in development and haven't baked anything down to look up textures. Yeah, always as always with the with this stuff, it's probably at least eighty percent art and twenty percent render tech. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it's really important for artists to use uh, uh, textures that are and normal maps that are more like that last image and less like the first one. Those large, flat, shiny, untextured, perfectly smooth areas are never going to look good. Uh, suppose we could talk GLTF and metaverse standards. Um, that's a subject that seems to be coming up quite a bit lately. Um, on what it would look like if there was um, avatar interop with uh, other virtual worlds and how such a thing would even be 
possible. I know one of the uh, formats people throw around is VRM. Um, but VRM is controlled by a very small group and uh, is fluid. I was wondering if people had any uh, ideas on other avatar standards that might be out there. Uh, I believe Ready Player Me is like VRM. Um, like I know right now it's possible to um, manually port a VRM avatar or a Ready Player Me avatar into Second Life. I'm not sure if it would be possible to automate that. Um, or if it requires artist intervention. And it's difficult to have these conversations and uh, how to put it um, without Web3 kind of trying to take over the conversation because um, for whatever reason the idea of virtual world interop seems to be tied to like NFTs That's what that's kind of what I keep coming back to. It's like like standards are good for technology, but standards are bad for art. from the idea of one rig to rule them all. And use tech so that you can use an animation against one rig against a uh, 
avatar that's scanned into a different rig. But I'm not sure what the quality of the user experience would be if in a system like that, if if it would be good enough, or if everything would just look goofy. And that's the other side is, is it ethical? Because um, people didn't plan on their stuff leaving SL when they started to distribute it in SL. the image of an avatar that gets into remashing. Um, there's a bunch of different techniques for that where you basically take the avatar mesh and you make a new mesh that looks kind of like it. But that's more of an LOD thing than, than anything else. Yeah, and other virtual worlds are kind of uh, they're kind of scared of Second Life avatars because, well, there's just a lot of data in them. just from a like sheer render complexity standpoint Yeah, and that's where uh, something like remeshing would probably be a requirement. I know uh, Blender has some remeshing capability. Um, Simply Gone definitely does. But the remeshing isn't just 
remeshing and and simply gone. It's uh, if I remember right, they they literally voxelize your avatar or whatever model um, and generate entirely new textures for it. So so they voxelize it and then turn the voxel representation into a a mesh and generate a whole new texture bake for it. The textures that come out are pretty bonkers. There's just like tons and tons of islands. Yeah, and Simply Gone doesn't try to retain the UVs. It just regenerates whole new maps. Yeah, it's, it's mathematically impossible. Uh, Of course, you know, you could just have a high enough resolution mesh and put all the colors per vertex. Don't even need textures. Yeah, and that's funny. It's it, it it's what what Beck said. That's that's basically nanite. Um, Nanite's already doing that for normal maps. And this is where I look at the GLTF spec and discover that, oh, wow, it does in fact allow you to have multiple colors per vertex. So we're just going to have to make that work, aren't we? I mean, it's not that bad. The uh, underneath the hood, the the second life renderer actually is packing 
a color per vertex just to save on um, having to set the, the color uh, between draw calls. No, um, the way it works in GLTF is uh, your material can source uh, parameters from textures. Um, oh, where'd it go? I'm not exactly sure what the syntax is or if it's possible with the PBR material to source a color from the mesh. Um, but I don't know for the textures, it's, you can basically say this channel of that texture gets fed into this parameter. Um, Yeah, I'm looking at the spec and I'm not actually seeing a way to source the uh, vertex color. I don't know, specs are wonderful. <laughs> now I can just point at the spec and be like can't source the color from the vertex stream oh well and then uh, artists can point at the spec and say hey you have to be able to let us do XYZ because spec says and I have to say okay Oh no, they're they're fine. Um, the 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 stuff that the uh, puppetry team is doing is with, with import is um, not really related.
Uh, it's more of a um, adapting different formats than changing the runtime. Uh, I'd expect the first GLTF scene import release to, to stop at animation support. So support everything that is in the spec up to, but not including animations. Um, and then a follow on would add animations. Not that it wouldn't support rigged assets, but that's different. Maybe I missed something then. I don't know. Uh, Ryder, did you want to clarify? Uh, as far as I know, that side of the project, uh, as I said in chat, is not changing internal anima any of the internal uh, animation formats or skeletons or anything along those lines. Um, it's just being able to bring in uh, a wider variety of formats. Um, I think there is some work on skeletal skeleton retargeting so that uh, uh, like a Mixamo, which uses a different skeleton, uh, could be brought in and, and applied to an SL avatar. But that is, that is my understanding of what's going on. I know Leviathan just uh, did a little bit of work on the IK. I have not checked it against uh, the uh, the prototype uh, uh, animation uh, uh, LSL animation functions yet. So I am not sure how unblocked I am there. Yeah, I know what I'm really excited about is the uh, um, joint streaming protocol. Um, because in a world where the viewer says, this is where my joints are, and the server says, okay. Um, then the viewer doesn't have to rely on the server as much for its... Uh, animation state machine. Yeah, that's good. That's going to open, that opens up all sorts of possibilities. Uh, even, even right now, uh, using the new viewer, you should be able to, uh, on the uh, public servers I have up, you should be able to track from, from a script where your joints are. But, uh, uh, more to come there when I get the uh, uh, once I once I can swing back to it. Which reminds me, when are we getting PBR servers? Ask QA. Yeah. 
I actually did uh, ask Bugsley. He says probably next week. Sweet. And that, would that be pre-flight or would that be somewhere that users can get at? Uh, pre-flight. I think there are folks on this that in this meeting that are that are on the pre-flight channel access list for some of them. Cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The the plan is pre-flight, and once uh, we're sure pre-flight is is stable, uh, we'll set up a uh, snack channel for it. Yeah, and the snack channel. I intend to have some. And bring the the rumpus rooms over to the snack channel. I think, or it, it needs to be new rumpus room regions, but or something like that. At least that's the hope. Yeah, that's on the list. Yep. Yeah, Beck just poked a hornet's nest. Um. The the resolution on being able to read, you, I don't let you read every joint. You you only read uh, you actually read from the attachment points. Uh, so that cuts down on the on the uh, physical resolution, and the speed at which, the speed at which I let you. Uh, 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 read uh, joint positions uh, is such that uh, you you couldn't make any sort of high fidelity uh, uh, copy of an animation. Yeah, there's a bigger discussion there about um, when is it appropriate to uh, hinder a useful capability in the name of copy protection. Yes, I still remember my head on a on a stick for uh, with respect to uh, visual parameters. I mean, if I was going to go right, what what Rolly said, um, people do copy animations. LSL is not how they do it. Um, Yeah, and that's the open question. Like, a lot of the time, it doesn't matter what's technically correct. It that matters how people feel. I mean, feelings do matter. But is there a way to? soothe people's fears without uh, without sacrificing technical ability that enables awesome stuff because like if you could get high fidelity LSL uh, scripting uh, in response to 
like real time joint position data. There's a lot of cool stuff you could do with that. Right. So what does that look like? I don't know. Oh, where's the red card? On, on my end, yeah, I, I, on my end, I, we can, we can loosen the, the throttle and, uh, force sleep on the scripts, uh, uh, in, in the future. But I, at the moment, I would rather err on making sure that, uh, making sure that the animation creators are not made uncomfortable. both actually the throttle limits the number of uh, of attachment points you can read uh, during a certain period of time um, and the uh, the force sleep ensures that when you uh, ensures that the animation has had a time has had time to move forward uh, prior to uh, 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 prior to your next read so you can't catch a you can't get a a, 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 a coherent frame Yep, yep. I gotta run and uh, take a look at this deadlock. Oof. Yay, threads! Thanks, folks. Thanks, everyone.